Peter Delapena here with USA Women's Captain Cindy Sri Harsha after a 78 run loss to Scotland on the first night of the Women's T20 World Cup Qualifier here in Abu Dhabi. First off, what are your overall thoughts on the team performance tonight? I think the first 14 overs of our uh, fielding, I think 12 overs, I think we were right in the game when there were four down for 40 years. I think we were right in the game. Of course, um, Sarah Bryce, we've always known uh, the batter that she is and um, she took the game away in the last six overs. Um, but we were still right in the game. The bowlers bowled well, uh, responded to the plans that we have been talking about and um, definitely right in the game for the first 12 overs. So the first 12 overs, specifically the first nine, you had them 45 for four at the end of the ninth over. And Bumi Kabadraju had taken two wickets in that over. You take her off and she didn't bowl again the rest of the match. Why? Yeah, I mean, good question. There's some sometimes that we go out that I just felt like, you know, the spinners were getting away with it. And I just thought that Keats and uh, the Pacers could keep on going. And yeah, I mean, some wrong calls. Definitely, I'll uh, say I should have got a back, but it's just one of those wrong calls. In general on this tour, the strategy in the second half of the innings has tended to be pace heavy consistently in every match. When traditionally, whether it's a women's associate cricket or associate cricket in general, most teams generally struggle against spin bowling. Why has the overall philosophy for the USA team been leaning more towards using the pace bowlers in key stretches of the innings as opposed to going for a spin? Well, that's that's been a conscious effort to get uh, paces when we have four out because we were giving away too many boundaries when they were bowling in the power play. So that's one of the reasons why Ritu, you can see, is bowling in the power play or we were also thinking about Tarano to come over in the power play. It's just because to you know, give the um, paces a little bit of more protection of, about having four fielders outside. Sai Uni made her debut, didn't get the bowl. It looked like that was a strategic decision on the fly. Yeah. I'm assuming you pick her because you want to bowl her, but of course. as things unfolded, she didn't get a chance to bowl. Yeah. What did you see on the field that led to the decision that you held her back? Yeah, that was one of the discussions that we were having on there, should I be bringing Sai? But in my mind, I felt like you know slow bowlers would be going away for too many runs than what we were giving. And I still feel like the choices that we made with the paces were still good if we could have stopped those boundaries. A fielding, I felt like the last six overs of fielding could have been, you know, above par, but uh, it's just that it did not work out the way I we planned out to be, but I still do back myself with the decisions that I've taken. In terms of the fielding in general, the catching was solid. You had one drop chance at extra cover off Priyana's Chatterjee, but generally speaking, catches or chances that in the past USA teams would have put down, they were held on to the changes that you would expect to be taken, especially ones like Disha took on the boundary, things like that. Um, but the ground fielding, mm -hmm. not just in the last six overs, but throughout, it looked like a lot of the players had so much energy, it almost backfired, where they were so eager and almost over-aggressive trying to get to the ball to cut off a single, and they kind of lost the fundamentals and the basics of just focusing on getting to the ball and cutting it off first and maybe conceding the single and instead because they were over eager a dot ball or at worst a single would turn into two or sometimes four. Um, what did you see from your perspective in terms of the energy levels and what was causing some of the sloppiness in the field? Well that's something that we did talk about. Uh, there are some technicalities that we're trying to work especially in the boundary fielding where we're supposed to cut the ball rather than running behind the ball. That's something that we've discussed a little bit. I know we came into this game uh, being really eager to wanting to do well on the field as well. For the most part of it, catching, like you said, was good. Uh, it definitely did feel like we let the bowlers down in terms of ground fielding. We could have, this score would have easily been 110 if we could have stopped those boundaries and you know then it would have been a different game coming into bat at 110 we didn't have to think about going you know six runs per over so I think it's just the fielding the last six overs so I still back the bowlers the decisions that we took about who had to bowl was still right but it's just a you know fielding did not back us up. That extra 21 felt like it made a big difference because in the chase again the top order was going so so hard and it looked like 
the strategic decision in terms of trying to hold yourself back was simply be, to try and promote some power hitters yeah. to try and take advantage of the power play. Yeah. It didn't work out, but just the approach to try and go hard, that was the only way you were going to get to have a chance at victory. Yeah. It didn't work out. Yeah. Um, how would you evaluate overall the batting approach in particular, how the power play unfolded? Yeah, I mean, that was a conscious effort, like you said, that we definitely were trying to get uh, ahead of the game with the first six overs, you know, trying to utilize just that, you know, power play. Um, that, that was a conscious effort of sending uh, Ritu or Snigda, and it did not work out, but, you know, we still back ourselves, you know, they are the power hitters for us, and, you know, going forward, you know, we're going to keep put them in those situations where they can go and express themselves. It did not work out today, but, you know, I'm sure they'll come back stronger the next day. The final margin might not reflect it, but for decent portions of this game, the competitive gap between USA and Scotland was not that big uh, compared to matches in the past where USA has really been very far away from Scotland. Um, in terms of reflecting on past games against Scotland compared to today, where do you feel USA has closed the gap in competitiveness and where do you feel USA still has a long way to go. I think we were braver on the field and you know, trying to be uh, the intent on the field was there and that's that's something that we just touched upon even though the score doesn't reflect that it was just 50 odd there but the intent of the batters going in wanting to score runs every ball I think that's something that we're trying to push in and as a culture itself to change that um, that's the difference and definitely on the field itself I think the first 11 overs we look brilliant on the field and you know, everybody responding taking those catches and bowling in the right areas that's something that the past four games that we've played with talked about you know bowling well in the first power play and the power play was amazing we just got 20 uh, 24 I believe uh, in the six overs uh, just amazing I think we're getting most of the things right it's about you know being able to doing the right things for a longer time periods I think that's something will come with experience and exposure um, we don't play you know uh, higher ranked uh, rank teams enough uh, the only time we really play them is when we come to these ICC global qualifiers where every game is you know is a do or die um, definitely if we do get to play a lot more bilateral series then we can try out a lot more opportunities give a lot lot more combinations and see what goes better for us but with every game we're only getting better scorecards might not show but definitely the girls are responding to the plans that we're putting out there anything else you want to say about today's game well i think it was a good game um definitely a great exposure for the girls you know um i like that it's a quick turnaround so we come back tomorrow to ireland so we you know we have to quickly put, put this past behind us and then just come out there and express ourselves tomorrow just one more point in terms of you, you talked about Sarah Bryce, you mentioned her and, and what she did in the last couple overs in particular. Um, there was that big 19 run over that really was devastating at that point in the game where she hit uh, three fours and a six, I believe it was. Um, and just, again, you also touched on the fact that just not being able to, to sustain it for 20 overs. You were really, really good for... 12 overs, 13 overs, 14 overs, but you know, in a cricket game for being yeah. good for 14 overs. Um, in terms of just the level of stamina or the, or the level of kind of competitive focus for the teenagers, did you feel that that was good enough or did you feel that there was something within there that was a learning point that a lot of the younger players can get out of tonight? Well, I think this is something that they've never come across before. They've uh, they've played under 19 levels against the West Indies, or I mean, they went to when went over to West Indies to play the Rising Star tournament, or when they played the West Indies. They haven't come across these kind of batters. They haven't been put into these you know pressures and challenges. So this is the first time they're having to respond to it, having to see the batters coming at them this strong, and how do they respond to it? I don't think it's the stamina. It's definitely uh, playing more competitive crickets with cricket with you know higher ranked teams being able to come into these challenges more and responding to it itself I don't think it's anything to do with this stamina it's just about giving them more exposure and experience in these situations all right USA captain Sindhu Shri Harsha thank you thank you